Greetings folks, this is the Flysky FSI6S from Gearbest. Now it's not the i6, that's the i6, totally different radio. Well it's similar but very very different. Uh, now this is quite an interesting radio, it's a um, really really nice uh, form factor and you might recognise it as being quite similar to the DJI Phantom style of, of radio. Uh, and that's what this radio is designed to, to mimic, I suppose. Um, it's specifically designed to fly quadcopters and specifically, as it comes, a, a GPS-controlled quadcopter similar to the DJI Phantom or, or something like that. Not the Phantom, but, but uh, something that can use the uh, Flysky uh, receivers. It's a 10-channel radio. It comes with a 6-channel receiver, but it only has one model memory at the moment. Uh, you can do firmware upgrades to add more model memories, but if you think that this is dedicated to flying a GPS quadcopter, that makes more sense. You would just have one radio controlling one quadcopter, I suspect. Now it has, uh, the throttle lever is spring-centred, which is different to fixed wing radios. You can easily mod it to make it into a, a non-spring-centering throttle. And I don't have any quads, I don't fly quads, so uh, I won't be able to use it as a quad radio, but there are other things that I'll be able to use it for with this uh, spring-centered throttle. That'll be interesting. I'll show you that a little bit later on. Bit of fun. Now, let's have a look at some of the features. It has two two-position switches, two three-position switches. It has sort of spring-loaded variometers on the top left and right. I would find them very useful. They're like sort of having sliders on my other radios uh, and they just sort of sit exactly where you want them. Your fingers just naturally sit on those, those two sliders there. It also has two push buttons, momentary push buttons on the back there, which are just exactly where your fingers are going to sit. There are a few different versions of this radio. This is the slightly cheaper one that doesn't come with the phone or the iPad holder, uh, which screws in there. So I think this is called the version two from Gearbest. Makes it a bit cheaper. Really nice build quality, a nice little handle there. It has two internal antennas and the range is very good, apparently. Uh, the, certainly the range with this radio, which is sort of the same internals really. Uh, the range with this radio is just fantastic. It's four AA batteries, cheap and easy. The receiver is a, an FSIA6B six channel receiver with sleeve dipole antennas, very nice. You can get a 10 channel receiver as well if you want to use the whole 10 channels. And uh, this is uh, PWM or PPM or it also does uh, IBUS and SBUS. I've never had to use them, so I don't really understand them, but that'll make more sense to people who fly quads and use flight control boards, I suppose. On the bottom, we have a trainer port and a USB connection. Uh, you actually get a USB cable so that you can connect it to your PC and upgrade the firmware. I suspect it's PC only, not Mac, which is unfortunate because I don't have a PC. To turn it on, we hold down the two power buttons and we're getting a warning because I have one of the switches in the wrong position. They all have to be in the up position, so switch that up and we get the proper start up. Now we'll see uh, the transmitter battery voltage and the receiver battery voltage. You can tap on them and adjust those alarm values, the high, high and low alarm values if you want to. Tap to go back. Now I'll uh, connect up a receiver and you'll see the receiver uh, battery reads there, shows that you're actually connected and you've got a good signal. That's very good. Now if you swipe to the left you'll get the uh, sensor list. If there are any sensors connected to the receiver then they'll, they'll be listed here uh, I think uh, and this error line here uh, gives you an idea of the strength of the signal and 0% errors so it's a, a perfect signal. If I unplug the receiver, that will change. There we go, so that disappears. And we have two timers here that you can configure with a switch and how they start and stop and all that sort of stuff, which is very nice. Flight mode here, or fly mode as they call it. 
you can configure a switch or you configure two switches to change flight modes, um, which is especially useful for a quad. You can change from return to home, GPS, acro mode, all those different, sort, different sorts of things, and you can choose two different switches. So if you go through all three positions of the two three position switches, you can end up with nine different flight modes configured in that screen. Now if we look at the setup, you can reverse all the channels, and it shows the whole ten channels there, if you, if you need to. You can adjust the endpoints, which is the sort of the extreme travel of the servos. Auxiliary channels, you can set up the auxiliary channels uh, to do different things. Will be activated by different controls. Uh, I've set channel five to be the flight mode, so um, in this screen here, uh, there's channel five uh, and switch B operates the flight modes. Sub trim is the only way you can do trims on this computer, uh, this on this radio. Doesn't have trim switches at all, which is a bit of a strange one. So you have to do all your all your trimming in this sub trim screen. With the uh, firmware update, I think that gives you different options for for um, selecting trim. Here's the mix. Now the mix, when it looks like this, is actually off. Uh, it had me confused for a little while. I, th I thought that meant that mix is on, but no. You push that button to turn it on. Then you can configure the uh, mix there. And although it says it's off. You put that, push that button to turn it off, so the mix is on when it looks like that. Don't need the mix at the moment. You can set your fail safe, which is excellent. Binding the receiver it tells you to turn the receiver off because I've got it on at the moment. Uh, brightness and sound. You can turn the sound down, the brightness, whatever you want to do. Output mode. Oh, okay, I'll turn off the receiver. There we go. So you can choose PW, PWM or PPM, very useful. Stick mode, you can choose what mode you want to fly in on mode 2, so that's good. Uh, factory reset, no, I don't want to do that. Firmware update, this is very, very easy and is designed to be uh, updatable with the firmware. Uh, you just download the firmware, plug it in with the supplied cable to your Windows PC, go through the routine and it'll up, update the firmware. Uh, I don't have a PC, so I can't do that just at the moment, but I will do that in the future. And just the information on one firmware 1.1, I think the firmware is up to 2, 2.2, something like that. So it's very much worth updating, I believe. So now we can swipe to the right. Whoops. Go back to the screen, swipe to the right, and you can see all the different channels, what they're doing. Display screen, all 10 channels. Momentary switches on the back. That's the flight mode screen. Now there's another hidden menu. If you hold both sticks down and to the left when you're turning it on, then you get the factory menu they're calling it. You can adjust the sticks, throttle mode. Uh, if you do the mod and change the throttle to a, a non-centering one, you can tell the radio what you've done so it helps to understand it. Transmit a battery adjust. You can accurately calibrate the battery reading, receiver bind, key test. You can test all the different inputs to make sure they're working properly, LCD. And you can recalibrate the sticks. Once you've done the firmware update, you, you probably need to recalibrate the, recalibrate the sticks and the switches and things. And this is the screen that you do that in. Now I'll show you my little device that I can use with the spring centering sticks to the same. So this is a little two servo bot. Uh, it's just driven by two standard size Fataba 3003 servos. They've been modded to be continuous rotation. I've just hot glued a plastic jar lid onto the each servo. Cable tied that onto a piece of uh, timber. What's that about a hundred by hundred millimeters and we've got a little wheel out the back there as well. And that's all we need to make a little very maneuverable bot. So I have the receiver powered up. I'm going to plug the left hand wheel into the throttle channel, channel three. 
and you, see, you can see we've got a bit of creep so we need to do a bit of sub trim trimming so I've got the sub trim for channel 3 wrong digit so I've gone down to negative 4 for that channel now I'll plug the other the right hand wheel into channel uh, 2 which is the elevator Got some creep in that one too, so we'll adjust that. Minus 60 has done that, very good. So now, throttle stick makes the left hand wheel go forwards and backwards. Elevator stick makes the right hand wheel go forwards and backwards. So let's just tidy all of this up. Now for balance, I need to put that battery down the back a little bit. Just keep this all together using a rubber band. For the moment so there we go there you go a bit of fun with just two servos and a receiver simple little radio so this is the FSI6S, it's an interesting little radio, beautiful, feels really nice in the hand. It can be improved with easy firmware updates and stick adjustments. Purchase links from Gearbest are in the description and thanks for watching.